Welcome to the PMDG 737 here at London Heathrow. We're on runway 27 left and what we're going to look at today is a very basic tutorial on how to just get the aircraft off the ground and back onto the ground. Uh, not real world procedures, just uh, very basic bare minimums of what you need to do to be able to get the aircraft away and, uh, and back on the ground. So what we'll look at first is uh, just how to set up the FMS. So uh, we've got uh, our FMC here. We're going to select that and uh, go to the route page. And we've started with engines running on the runway just to make it a little bit easier as well so we don't have to do a full setup. We're going to put the departure airport in here, which is London Heathrow, EGLL. Echo Golf Golf Delta for Bristol, which is the destination. And we can just put a random course call sign in here and the flight number and we're on runway 27 left so we're going to put that in the runway section here and keeping it nice and simple we're just going to go to departures and arrivals here and select the ILS for runway 27 at Bristol it's going to be just like a straight line we're going to fly and we're going to join up the uh, CF27 to the top there activate and execute that and you see that that's given us a magenta line on the navigation display to follow uh, so that's uh, all the route information we're actually going to put in there so that's uh, that's pretty much done from from this perspective so in the performance we go in it ref and go just put a cost index in there I'm just going to put six in uh, just make up a random reserve figure for now 2.5 is sensible enough. Zero fuel weight, we can just double click on that and it will do it based on what we currently have. Uh, we're going to cruise it at 6,000 today, so we're going to put that in there. Execute that, and uh, I've got zero wind in the sim. It's a, I've just basically set a very standard atmosphere day with zero wind, so we're just going to put that. We'll leave this all as it is, and uh, that's basically all we need to put into the performance uh, page there. We go to the N1 limit page, make sure that the temperature is correct, which it is. Uh, we'll just do a full 24k takeoff, we'll just leave that as defaulted there just to make it easier. And the flaps default to 5 for departure here on the PMDG, we'll put that in flaps 5. If we double click on CG, that will give us the center of gravity location and a trim figure, 6.82. We will set that on the indication down here. We just wheel this around till it's at 6.8, which is around about there. Yeah, about there. And uh, then we can fill in the speed. So we've got a V1 of 128, a rotate speed of 131, and a V2 of 139. We'll put the V2 speed in here in the MCP and that is set. I'm going to change that one over to uh, hectopascals because we're flying in uh, the UK and that's what we use over here. Uh, so that's pretty much the FMC uh, done as we like the bare minimums that we need to do in order to get it done. So that's what we're going to leave it as right now. All right, now let's have a look at the overhead panel then. So what we're going to do is set 6,000 here in the cruise altitude and the elevation for Bristol, which is just around 600 feet uh, for the landing altitude. We'll come down to the MCP and we'll set this. I'm going to put the flight directors on, put the master on the side that we're flying from. We'll fly from the left today. and set the uh, altitude we want to initially level off at. We'll just go straight up to 6,000, so we'll put that in there. And uh, that's the MCP looking good. Make sure the order brakes in RTO. The flaps are already set to five, so that's looking pretty good too. Come down to the pedestal here, and uh, we will just leave this as it is. That's okay to get us off the ground and the transponder put that in TARA and uh, yeah that's all fine for now come over to the PFD and we're going to check and make sure 
we've got everything set on here that looks good we can see the speed set uh, we're going to use terrain and airports on the navigation display we uh, would have weather radar set up on on here but unfortunately i don't think it's modeled yet so we'll just use terrain now we set terrain and airports up on the right hand side as well and that's a basic minimum setup and like i said there'll be much more we'll be doing in real life to uh, to program the fmc and to get going but we're just gonna leave it uh, like this just for a basic tutorial so uh, what we can do with the uh, parking brake off there we can make sure that we're configured for takeoff just by advancing the thrust levers to nearly full there and just uh, making sure we don't hear the takeoff configuration sound so if we were not correctly configured for takeoff for example if we still had the parking brake on and we advance the thrust levers we can hear there's a horrible warning noise and uh, that basically means that we're not in a correct configuration for takeoff there's a few triggers for that one's the flaps one's the trim the parking brake um, so we are we know we're good for the takeoff configuration so let's take off let's go so first thing we do is set 40 percent on the n1 and uh, wait for the engine to stabilize then we can use this uh, secret button up here for toga there we go and set the takeoff thrust you see the FMAs here have changed to N1 heading select and toga that's what we want to see there's 80 knots there's V1 and rotate so we're going to gently lift the nose up up towards about 15 degrees and then after that we're going to follow the flight directors positive rate of climb we can put the gear up now the flight directors do tend to command above 20 degrees of pitch on this mod here so uh, we'll just not follow that we'll stay below 20. when we get to 1000 feet here we can put in the autopilot for command a and bug the up speed once we are above the white dot here and we've got a positive trend vector on the speed we can raise the flaps to flaps one so we'll use that and you see there goes the lever and the indication is coming up as well once we're above the flaps one maneuvering speed we can select the flaps up And the flaps are up we've got no uh, lights to indicate that there's any problems we can select vnav and you see the aircraft's now going to speed up to 250 and we can do our after takeoff checks we're going to put the gear to the off position put the auto brake to the off position and we're going to put the start switches off and we're going to turn the retractable landing lights off Oops. There we go. And the taxi light off as well. Now, normally we'd want to go, we'd slow down the rate of climb, but I'm just going to leave it today just for making it simple. Leveling off at 6,000 feet there. Okay, so what we need to do now is head towards the ILS for Bristol and set up the approach. We've got the legs page selected on the pilot monitoring side here. So what we can do is uh, just reselect the uh, CF27 point, execute that, and that refreshes the route. And we can use LNAV. And you see LNAV is now selected on the FMA. And now we're going to head straight towards the ILS for runway 27. We're going to do an auto land today, uh, so that makes it a little bit easier as well just to learn how to manage the systems. Now, if you don't have charts, 
uh, that's okay because you can actually find the information about the LS on the uh, initref page here and uh, you can see here we've got the ILS frequency and final approach course of uh, ILS frequency 110.15 and the final approach course of 267 so let's set it up from that so here on the on the navigation radios we are going to set 110.15 Uh, make that active on both sides and the final approach course we said was 267 so we'll set 267 in the courses here we'll set a minimums on the uh, primary flight display as well that will give us a warning when we get down to our minimum altitude now because we're going to do auto line we're going to change this over to radio here and we're going to select 50 in the radio minimums and uh, that's pretty much all we need to do in order to, for the aircraft to fly down the approach what we do need to do though is set up the speeds and auto brake setting so you'll see here there's a weight uh, which changes the speed based on what the gross weight is you can actually set what you're expecting the gross weight to be for landing now we're flying in a straight line so it should be fairly accurate uh, so we've got uh, current fuel of 7.3 and it's estimating a landing fuel of 6.9 tons so that's uh, 0 0.4 tons to come off of the weight so we're going to go back to the initref page and put 62.1 in here which is 0.4 less than what's currently showing as the gross weight uh, we'll do a flap 40 landing with 5 knots on top and you'll see now that our VREF is being shown on the PFD here. And that is the basic setup for the uh, arrival in the FMC. We'll go back to the cruise page on here and keep that shown. We've got 50 miles to go until our top of this until our uh, center fix and to the top of descent we've got uh, 36 miles so we're getting there. And what we need to do as well, 30 miles from the top of the descent point, if we lower the altitude in the MCP here while we're in VNAV, VNAV path, then the aircraft will automatically start descending. So you see that the aircraft wants to be 2,500 or above at the CF27 point. So if I put 2,500 initially in the altitude window, the aircraft will automatically start descending. We're also going to need an auto brake setting uh, which we'll just say auto brake 3 should be fine for Bristol. So I've just put the range out to 40 and uh, you can see the top of the descent point is marked on the navigation display here so we can see that coming up and you can also see the distance to go to the top of the descent point down here on the FMC which is showing 18 miles. So if I reduce the range now to 20, yeah, you can see it's now in the 20 range. Alright, so we are coming up to our top of descent point now. And what you'll see is that the aircraft will slowly start to enter a descent towards 2,500 feet as we go past that uh, top of descent point. You see it's two miles to go on the FMC and you can see it coming up here on the navigation display. So the aircraft should any moment now start to descend. There's the top of descent. You see now we've got VNAV path information displayed on the navigation display and also on the primary flight display as well. The throttles or thrust levers are coming back and the aircraft's now entering the descent. Uh, back to idle and the aircraft's now managing the descent in VNAV which is the easiest mode makes it nice and simple for us not to have to do too much work okay so you see now the rate of descent has reduced uh, and the speed is now starting to come back so that's a good prompt for us to think start thinking about uh, configuring the aircraft uh, for the approach so we'll start using the flaps in a second 
we can't go below the up speed here without having flaps selected. So now's a good time. So we're going to select flaps 1. So the speed is checked and we'll go for flaps 1. You'll see the flaps start to uh, come out there on the indicator. We're going to use speed intervent now and take control of the speed and match the, the speed bug to the flap 1 maneuvering speed. And we won't go below that speed without uh, selecting further flaps. There we go, so the speed's coming back quite nicely. We'll go for flap 5 now, which is another two clicks. And we'll match the speed to the flap 5 maneuvering speed. There we go. And what we can do is put approach mode on the standby uh, attitude indicator here. And we can see the localizer and the glide slope coming in quite nicely there. Uh, we're within a sensible range, so what we're going to do is select approach mode and select command A and B. And you see the localizer is captured. Make sure the runway heading is set in the heading bug. And there's the glide slope capture, but the missed approach altitude in the altitude window, which is 3,000 feet here. Now we're on the approach. You can see the runway ahead. We can go ahead and uh, do our before landing checks. So we put the gear down. We take flap 15, which is another two clicks on the flaps. You see the flap go to 15. We'll match the speed to the flap 15 speed. So the aircraft slows down a bit more. And then we can take the landing checklist down towards uh, flaps. So we'll put the start switches in continuous. I just put the landing lights on now as well. We'll assume we've been cleared to land. Uh, we'll check the recall like before. There we go. Speed brake, we're going to arm it. There we go, and um, check for the green light. Landing gear is down three green. Order brake, we've got three set. And now we can configure for the landing. So we've got flap 25 initially. One more notch of flaps. Slow down to the flap 25 maneuvering speed. And you see here the flap 40 speed is 156. We are below that. So we can go all the way down to flap 40. Oops, uh, go for the VREF plus five speed. So now the aircraft's slowing down to the VREF plus 5 speed. It's a little bit above the glide slope. Hopefully the autopilot should take care of that. And this should switch over in a moment to uh, CMD. There it is. And that uh, basically means that we're doing a dual channel approach. And we're going to check that uh, flare is armed, which is, you can see flares written in white there. As we pass 5, 000, uh, 500 feet, we're going to make sure that flare is armed for the auto land. Okay, there's 500 above the uh, aerodrome level. We're coming up to 500 on the radio altimeter as well. And we're going to make sure flares armed, which it is. So a little bit high over the threshold here. Hopefully it's not going to do anything silly. 40, 30, it's flaring yeah. and there's the touchdown. The nose has derotated. We're going to disengage the auto throttle, autopilot reverses. And we'll take manual brakes, slow it down for the corner. Cancel the reverses. And that's it, we can exit the runway.